what's up guys, it is Dan from Fight Wave and today I'm joined by somebody who I've been dying to speak with for quite some time now. I'm finally happy that I got to sit, I get to sit down and speak with him. You know, he trains out of the Extreme Couture Gym, he's a Bellator featherweight. And, you know, uh, if you guys have seen Nicholas Moda's Instagram story, or Instagram, you know, there's a clip of Moda shooting a Barrett 50 cal and, you know, uh, Mr. Burnell here, uh, you know, fuck that shit dog, fuck that shit dog, how you doing today Mads? Yeah. Hey, my head's rigging, hey, bro. Hey, fuck that shit. I can't do that. Nope. Did you go there? Yeah, what's up, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good, brother. Pretty That's good. Yeah, up. man. <laughs> no, I had to do it. Dude, that video lives rent free in my head, dude. I I'm sorry, bro, no. but that it's just awesome. But no. first and foremost, obviously, you're in the UK. How are you doing? You know, ahead of Bellator 299, where you're going to be fighting Daniel Weichel. Talk to me just about, first and foremost, how you're doing. We're just talking off air about, you know, you getting a Hardwood Classics Rodman jersey. How's life? Uh, life is good. I'm here in Leeds right now with uh, IMA. Uh, MMA gym. I just did a seminar today and get some good roles in with the guys here. And, yeah, enjoying life. Going back to America pretty soon, like two weeks. Yeah, I'm just enjoying life out here in Europe right now. No, yeah, definitely. And obviously, you know, travel has been a big part of, uh, I feel like, your life as of late. You know, obviously, you've been all around the world, you know, fighting in a, di a multitude of different countries. You've been training in the States for quite some time at Extreme Couture. Talk to me about, obviously, the travel that you've been, like, the experience of traveling a lot more since, uh, you know, fighting with the UFC. You know, you fought in Cage Warriors, you fought in Bellator. You fought all across the world, so talk to me about that experience of just being able to to travel the world and you know really get to explore more of it through martial arts. To be honest, it's like it, the cool part is like get to train with all different kinds of people, but I don't give two shits about traveling the world. Mm -hmm. The perfect thing for me is just like you know my couch playing PlayStation and just oh, go that's the vibe, bro. You know? Like, I don't give two shits, like, whenever people are, oh, man, so you live in Vegas, like, nine months, nah, ten yeah. months out of the year, like, isn't it cool, like, nah, it yeah, is what it if you're is. into strippers, gambling, and, like, <laughs> stuff like that, but that's not what I'm doing, I'm just training, I'm just, like, chilling, oh, oh, man, you went to Rome, did you see the Colosseum? I don't give two fucks <laughs> about seeing the Colosseum, because I gotta stand in line for, like, three hours. Three hours just to see it. I just... I just go on Google and watch the <laughs> oh, you, oh, you went to Paris. Did you see the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, I see the Eiffel Tower on Google. I don't give two shits. Yeah. That's a vibe, that, bro. I will, I, I will say this, though. I was just in Hawaii. That is the most beautiful place I've ever been. Like, so, so beautiful. Yeah, that was cool. No, that's Hawaii sick. Cool. No, Hawaii is a vibe, bro. And I mean, like you said, bro, just yeah. kick back. Play. What do you play on PlayStation? I play FIFA right now. Oh, FIFA shit. And Are you on PS5? I'm in, yeah, I'm on PS5. All right, I got to clap. I got to clap. The, I got to clap. The, you on PS, bro. I play FIFA too, bro. We got to run it. Yeah, we have facts. We can do that. And then, then when I'm in the States, I play Call of Duty with, like, Coach D. He's, like, big. you know, he's, like, a crack addict <laughs> for, like, Call of Duty. I've never seen a dude being so obsessed with like him and uh, Justin uh, James, man. Him and Justin James. Yeah, but, he, but he's fucking good at it, man. He's like, oh, Chris Kyle, Chris Kyle. This dude would be like laying up there just sniping people. Oh, Chris Kyle. Oh, Chris Kyle. Oh, Chris Kyle. Chris Kyle. That's how he is. Like, <laughs> all horned up on that. So when I'm in the States, I play a lot of Call of Duty. Uh, but, and then I actually oh my get my God. Xbox 360 just so I can play Fight Night Champion. The greatest game fighting of game. All time. The greatest fighting EA game. EA needs to get their fucking foot out their own ass and make another Fight Night game. Bro, they have to make that. I just got Undisputed 3 for my 360. Yeah. That shit is classic too, bro. What? You, you, is it out? Undi no, like the UFC Undisputed 3 on the Xbox 360. Oh. I thought because there's a new game developer. Oh, yeah. On the boxing, on the boxing game, game Undisputed. Yeah. Undisputed. So I was like, what is that out? It is out. It's on Damn, PC. That, who the fuck plays a boxing game on PC? I will say this either too. Like MMA games don't work like on PlayStation. Like yeah, all the grappling and stuff, blah blah blah. It don't work. 
like we just need a stand up like you can make a kickboxing game like a Tekken mm-hmm. I know Tekken 8 is uh, coming out soon but like SF6 striking games yeah but striking game works on PlayStation but the grappling aspect don't work on like consoles unfortunately no, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I know that, like, just in terms of fighting, like you said, Tekken 8, bro, I can't wait for that. SF6, yeah. MK1 is coming out. Just a good good year for fighting Mortal Kombat 1. Um, mm-hmm. Bro, like, the amount of fight, I wish fighters did that a little more. Like, you know, some of them are big gamers, bro. They just fucking gr- sit down, grind out video games all fucking day and train. And, like, mm-hmm. bro, are we going to get Mads Burnell on Twitch, bro? I'm, I am on Twitch, but I don't Twitch that much, but I Twitch sometimes when I play FIFA and uh, sometimes when I do Call of Duty, but mostly mostly when I just play FIFA. Do you play Ultimate Team or like Pro Clubs? No, nah, I don't play Ultimate Team. I think that shit is a scam just to get money out of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think, why would I play with like shitty ass players and have to use like real money to get like the good players and you never really get the players you want so i just play online like seasons no yeah that's a vibe with madrid my man yeah real madrid for life yeah. you know all madrid in aramas bro that's a vibe bro like i played seasons all like last year just played seasons because ultimate team is yeah like you said it's just weird um gets boring really quick but yeah bro that's awesome just to yeah. be able to to kick back train play video games like just very mellow lifestyle but talk to me, you know, yeah. obviously about, I guess, like, just that having that structure, you know, like, like you said, you don't really give a fuck about all the extra shit, you know, like, you're not into the traveling stuff, but, you know, just being able to have that structure, you know, like, uh, I'm gonna go train, I'm gonna go, you know, f- spar, do my thing, and then come home, play video games, and, and having that structure. Talk to me about just the, the lifestyle, you know, what, what what's it like for you just to kick back, do your thing, and, you know, see the success in the octagon, because... You know, you found insane success in Cage Warriors and Bellator, and now, you know, fighting at Bellator 299, right now, a lot of people putting respect on the name, finally, you know, after a long fucking time, putting some respect on the name of Mads Burnell. Talk to me about that, you know, just being able to, to li- you know, do, do you and more or less see the results, you know, come in your favor. Yeah, like, to me, structures everything. Uh, you know, I enjoy every moment. Of this i'm enjoying the journey uh for me i'm never that type of guy where i'm like oh fuck, i gotta go to practice i enjoy going in like whether it's grappling or mma sparring or whatever i really enjoy uh everything and i think a lot of people they think that all oh, mma fighters when you're at that level i i'm in i am at like they think we got like a super exciting lifestyle i'm a boring guy like i'm an old soul and a young body like yes yeah, so i just like my structure when I'm in Denmark, I like to chill with my family, walk the dog, play PlayStation, go have a good lunch with my pops. Like when I'm in the States, I live with my coach Dennis. So it's literally just wake up, eat breakfast, go to practice, go home, play PlayStation, eat, go back to practice, go home, talk shit, play PlayStation, sleep. That's it. All of it. <laughs> and I enjoy it. Yeah, it's a life. And uh, talking about that, that, that respect, to be honest, I don't think there's enough respect on my name. But it's because, like I always say this, for me... It's not about the casuals. I don't give two fucks about the casuals. For me, what really uh, means something for me is like when the OGs come and put respect sure. on my name. And that happens a lot. A lot of the OGs, they see what I'm doing and put a lot of respect on my name. Or when fellow fighters come and say, oh, yo, man, I see what you're doing. Because I think my style is, especially my stand-up style, is a little hard to understand if you don't know what I'm seeing when I'm rolling and doing cross-blocking and, and coming back like uh, with punches off the counter of the rolls and that shit but the ogs know that so that's super super fucking cool and i, I yeah I, I really enjoy that no yeah for sure i love what you mentioned is like bro because a lot of the times fans are just talking out of their ass you know like you and i both know that first and foremost you know like they come and they after a loss you know they're just ragging on the fighter but most of them have never stepped in that cage never stepped on the mats never done anything of this sort but like you said getting that respect from the ogs you know the guys who came before you you know the guys who you know, UFC won, or, you know, early days of fighting, you know, getting the respect from them, them seeing the technique, uh, I feel like it, it pays all of the, it hits you in all sorts of feels, because, you know, those are the guys that a lot of the, you know, the guys in their tw- in their 
late 20s, late thir- late thirties, you know, through their thirties right now. Those are the guys that you guys grew up watching. You know, watching the Ultimate Fighter, watching those, yeah. watching those shows, seeing these guys do that, and then they come up to you and they give you your dues and you know your props. It's like you know you're on the right path because you watch these guys coming yeah. up. So it's kind of like a full circle moment. One hundred percent. No, yeah, and then also, you know, right now with the featherweight division in Bellator, it's like wide open for the taking, in my opinion. I feel like there's no kind of structure or stability. Like, and I think that we could see, you know, you fighting for that title very, very, very soon. You know, it's a division like, hey, bro, anything can happen. It's literally like probably but, the most chaotic division. But see, for me, I don't even like to talk about that because right now I got a German. You got a guy in front yeah. of me. I got a a fucking, I'm not saying shit. I know I've been talking shit. No, yeah. This is to get the the mouse in the trap or what you say. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, he's a fucking legend. Mind you, he's a legend. I've been wanting to fight him forever, and now I finally got it, and really looking forward to that. I got a lot of respect for that motherfucker, and if you look at his record, if you look at his record, you see that he's never backing down. Motherfucker fought in Russia, like, Everywhere around the world, everywhere. Fought everywhere around the world, Russia, America, Germany. He even fought fought back in Denmark in two thousand and four, and he fought everywhere, everybody. Like that type of record, it's a gangster ass record. So I, I respect him a For lot. Sure. And I'm looking forward to that fight. No, yeah, definitely. And also, you know, like you said, bro, look at the guy in front of you, and then you think about the title after. But I feel like you can't help but think about what comes next. But obviously, like you said, Daniel Bichel in front of you. You know, a legend of the sport, somebody who's paid his dues, like you said, you know, fought everywhere across the world at a time where, you know, fighting in other countries was kind of more difficult to come by. But now, he, you know, it's so accessible. But when you see it way back when, you're like, oh, shit, this guy, this guy's been through it and back. But I guess just yeah. to, to talk about you, Mads, it's like, I feel like with you, like you said, you're an old soul. We get a lot of kind of like that OG kind of lifestyle, like, like kickback kind of guy, very mellow guy. And then also, like, that jokester vibe, you know, like, uh, for me, when I think about you, I oh, think yeah. about, obviously, like, the Bellator post-fight press conference, your colleague Dennis, you know, young Jason Statham, and, like, you know, he's talking about American junk food, American garbage food, and, you know, just, uh, bro, I can't help but laugh whenever I hear you in that post-fight, dude, it's just jokes, it's like, bro, Dave Chappelle's got nothing on Mads Burnell, dude, dead ass. Yeah, he got everything on me, Dave Chappelle's the greatest of all time when it comes to that, but, yeah. Like, to me, I really like talking. I really fucking enjoy banter. I love talking mad shit <laughs> with your coach, Dennis, and he's talking mad shit about me. And, and But we're doing it to each other. Like, we just, you know, I don't want to be around people who take themselves too serious. Sure. Like, uh, it's good to be able to laugh of yourself and laugh of others. And, like, just fucking, it's healthy laughing, I think. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we just talking shit to each other and sure. beating the crap out of each other, playing PlayStation, traveling the world, beating motherfuckers up. Like, yeah, excuse my French, but just enjoying life. That's what life is all about. And sure. Yeah, ain't nothing better than pulling a, a great prank on one of you guys, man. That's fucking hilarious. I gotta ask, bro. Okay, because you and Nicholas Moda are boys. I gotta ask, bro, what's the funniest thing that's happened between you guys? Because like I said at the beginning, the clip of him shooting the Baird 50 cal, that shit is... It lives rent free in the Hall of Fame in terms of funny moments of fighters, bro. For me, I gotta ask you: Is there anything you've done to Moda? Like, what's the best prank you've pulled on Moda? I don't know, man. It's just like we do a lot of Photoshop shit. Well, Photoshop <laughs> all kind of his face on all kind of fucked up shit <laughs> and post it. Like, yeah, just just day to day talking to shit. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't point out anything specific, but yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Just talking shit. Just talking shit. I mean, dude, Mm -hmm. I I gotta be dead ass, bro. I, I, after hearing you play FIFA on P, on the PS Five, I gotta run a game with you and record that. Cause honestly, bro, I I think if there's one place I can give anyone smoke, it's on FIFA, bro. Div one, easy claps. You know, we gotta run it, Mads. But obviously, you know, just smoking, smoking, (laughs) Mads. Add me. Smoking Mads. Smoking We might have to. We might have to play right after this, and I might have to post the results on the YouTube. But I, I don't have my PS5. Right ah, now, shit, so bro. I'm home. I'm home on Monday, so then I... For then sure. I can, then clap you. 
<laughs> I mean, the interview's not gonna be up until that <laughs> until like you know next week. But yeah. Deadass got to No, we gotta play. But you know, yeah. Mads, thank you for the laughs. Thank you for the good vibes. I feel like interviews like this is not even an interview, bro. Fucking forget the interview, bro. It's not even in the title at this point. It's just a conversation. You know, good vibes, good energy. Very down to earth person. You know, like you said, don't take yourself too seriously. Enjoy everything that comes your way and like live, make the most of life. I guess, like, just yeah. to wrap things up, you know, obviously, it's hard to predict what's next after your fight next, but I guess just in terms of, like, personal shit, is it, like, this? you want to just keep doing the same shit you're doing, or what's, like, the what's like the goal, I guess, like, you know, after this fight? Is it just to keep doing what you're doing, or, you know, is there anything, like, maybe one, one or two more fights? What's kind of, you know, your mindset after this fight? Or not after this fight, but mindset so, for the remainder of the year. Uh, so, my goal with my career, right, is, like, I'm I'm a huge fan of fighters. I'm like, like I'm a huge fan of like fighters like Arturo Gatti, James Tony, like Pernell Whitaker, like the old school fighters. So for me, of course, I want to win a belt before it's all said and done. I want to make a lot of money, but most important of all, I want to make these three things is the most important thing in my career. But like one thing I really really want to do is like I want to make fights. So when I'm old and I'm sitting with my family, I can put them on like, man, watch this badass fight. Like when I'm watching Arturo Gatti versus Mickey Ward, almost gets a tear in my fucking eye. Like this is what martial arts is all about. Like it's not about wins and losses because I've had performances where I won, where I feel like a bitch and I had losses where I felt like a fucking gangster. It's all about the performance. And you see that when you see Gatti Ward, Corrales versus Castillo, Tony versus uh, Vasily Girov, Holyfield versus Riddick Bowe, those kind of fights. So when it's all said and done, I want to have fights where I can sit back and like, look at that shit. I want, I want the upcoming guys to look at me, how I looked at Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward and those guys. Like, that's what I want. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, whether that's a great goal. Uh, whether it's the, it's the technical way, the guts I show, whatever. Win a belt, make shit ton of money, and make some great fucking fights. Deadass, That's ass, what bro. it's all about. That's what it's and all about. And then one more thing, I want to fight in Japan. That's one thing. I one thing, say. yeah. I want to have a fight in Japan. Could we see Risen expert? Uh, yeah, maybe on the next Risen card, dude. Bellator Risen 2? Yeah. No, because that's in July, I think. Oh, wait, yeah. Or, or three. Bellator Risen 3. I'm sure they'll do another one. They've got I it. I mean, I'll be... Su- if they make, if they make like, a New Year show uh, after the Vigil, of course, I got Vigil for it. But if they make a New Year show, it will be a fucking dream come true to fight inside Tama Super Arena or wherever they do it. As long as it's in Japan, like, the number one uh, travel destination I really want to go to is Japan because of that so i really 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 would like to fight in japan as well if that's a possibility if that's a opportunity that arises yeah no yeah definitely dude like bro mads anything if i could say one thing that i've gotten out of this interview is but you're a true gangster bro just true og <laughs> good vibes all around bro like don't no fucks give but i swear to god when I look at you and i think of my uncle bro like dead ass like not like that not like that hey yo <laughs> not like that hey before you get any weird shit hey i'm saying like like just in terms of that vibe, like <laughs> that shit is funny. You look like my uncle. What the fuck? Hey, bro, Armenians—they all look the fucking same, don't they? I mean, we all look. That the same. what? Um, did you uh, say Armenians? Armenians, yeah, I'm Armenian. My uncle, we all look the same. Oh damn! I yeah. look like an Armenian. That's the first time I heard that. I've heard like I look like somebody from the Balkans <laughs> and like from Russia a lot of times back in Denmark, but Armenian—that's the first time I heard. No, that. man. I mean, Madzi. True OG, bro. Jokester to the max, bro. The vibes <laughs> off the charts, dude. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for not taking... You, I mean, you know, if, if there's anything we can get from this, is don't take yourself too seriously. Live life to the max. Don't take shit, like, on a, you know, too seriously and just have fun. Like you said, at the end of the day, you want to be remembered? I'll be like, that's a gangster-ass fight. You know, when I'm on the TV, you're like, oh, fuck, you see what I catch him with there? Rock them there. You know, with your grandkids or anyone, it's about that but vibe. See, but see, what I, what I think about is like this. Like, when I think about fighters, first one, if I was going to show somebody a fight, like, boom, look at this one. Any Arturo Gatti fight, uh, it could be like uh, James Tony. Arturo Gatti is like the typical fighter. James Tony is in the opposite way. He's like more finesse kind of guy. He does it the smooth way. Gatti does it the raw, raw, uncut way, you know? So... 
if I've got to show somebody, okay, this is what you want to see. It's either Gaddy or Tony. It, 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 nobody gives a fuck if they're undefeated. Or Holyfield, if you want to watch the, the heart. Like, it's it's all about putting in great performances. I mean, so even in MMA. In the mirror. And, and it could be like, it could be like a wrestling, a great wrestling performance or a great stand-up performance, like a total dominant where you just hold somebody down and smack them in the face for three rounds. It doesn't matter. It's just like great performances, yeah. Technical great performances, yeah. I mean, that's the same thing with MMA, though. Like, at the end of the day, when you're getting someone into the sport, it's like you want to show them, like, the Gaethje versus Chandler or, you know, the Yuri versus Glover 1 or you want to show them, like, Lawler versus McDonald 2. It's fights like that. It doesn't matter where they end up, but, like, the fight's what matters. If you can go back to a fight and watch it, endlessly, it's a classic. That's why, that's why I have so much respect for, like, a Chael son and Dan Henderson and Randy Couture. It pisses me off. Chael, he used to work with Bellator. Now he's never at the events. Chael is, like, one of my three favorite fighters of all time. I really want to meet that motherfucker, but he's never there. Come on, Chael. <laughs> show up to some of, the, some of the Bellator fights. Come on. Man. He's too busy recording YouTube videos at this point. Fake. He's too busy yeah, putting out fake news. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, man. But Mads, it's been a blast to speak with you, dude. Fucking probably the best interview I've done in terms of just having a good time. The Mads Burnell Thank effect, you. dead ass. Oh, we gotta run the FIFA. That's for sure. Yep. I might get smoked. You might get smoked, but the fans gotta know. It's like Rocky versus Creed three. We got it. We don't. We won't know until we know. But you know, we thank you do so a live much. Stream on that. Get Moda for commentary. No, fuck that. He'll be like, oh, <laughs> nice goal. Oh, very nice. Oh, this fucking dumb shit. Shout out to Moda. He's fighting soon, man. <laughs> He's fighting in two weeks. <laughs> Madwell Torres, Nicholas Moda, if you guys haven't checked it out. This has been Dan from yeah. Fight Wave, guys, with Mads Burnell. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this interview, quote unquote. Uh, though it's just been a funny ass time. But thank you so much, Mads, to the fans at home watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.